everyone. Good afternoon. Got it. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the um the word the virtual web uh, workshop. So my name is Li Jin. I'm working at the University of Alberta. Um, so I'm currently chairing the Soil Mechanics Foundation divisions. So I'll be very happy to, you know, to introduce the pre the presenter. Um, so first thing I want to do is to introduce the Canadian Geotech Society. I uh, do understand that we have a few a few internationals and the friends well, who are not the members of the Canadian uh the CGS right. So currently CGS has about uh, fourteen hundred members uh, around the world. Uh, the CGS is driving force in geotechnical profession, and CGS provide opportunities for members to, uh, to promote their skills and to present research and, and the case studies. And currently, CGS has uh, about 20 local sections across Canada and okay. seven sessions, technical divisions, and, and Soil Mechanics Foundation is a part of the, uh, is one of the seven technical divisions and eight committees and has uh, several you know, graduate student chapters. All right, and regarding the Soil Mechanics Foundation Division, as you may be aware, right, you know, we do have uh, several events in the past a few years and past a uh, long, long ago, right? Uh, the, mandate, the mandate to the Soil Mechanics Foundation Division is to promote uh, the, the practice, right? To pro promote the practice of a geotech in, in the classical geotechnical engineering. Uh, foundations, retaining walls and piles, uh, slopes, um, and so on, and geosynthetics as, as so on. And in the past few years, we have been you know, quite active in offering the lectures, okay, uh, and then continuing education opportunities. So here, here is one, of, you know, this is one of the initiatives that we started. And starting from 2021 uh, during the COVID year. So we need to start the, the so called Soil Mechanics Foundation Division's Distinguishing Lectures. Uh, and we have the pleasure to host the several Distinguishing Lectures. Uh, Dr. Alex Sai, um, 20, 2021, uh, Dr. Richard Bathurst, 2022, and Peter Robertson, uh, 23. And this year we're happy to have a uh, Dr. Prof uh, Dr. Jinghua Yin right, from Hong Kong. So it's a great mixture, right? Mixture of uh, industry and academia. So, um, that, um, so in this year, okay, this year um, we are pretty um, very honored, right? Honored and privileged uh, to introduce the Professor Yin um, Jinghua as the fourth distinguished lecturer of the Soil Mechanics Foundation Division. So I'm going to read out the, the bio, right? Read out the bio, and then you guys can take a break, right? It can take uh, two minutes to finish, right? I know I, know I realized that Dr. Yin has a very long, uh, rich history, all right? Um, so Professor Yin, he received a PhD from the University of Manitoba in Canada in 1990. Um, he then joined the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Hong Kong Polytechnic University in 1995. Uh, starting from assistant professor and then become the chair professor in 2012. And he's now the chair professor in the soil mechanics division of the university. And Professor Ian has a good track of record in research and has a play a leading role in developing uh, soil testing equipment, fiber optic sensors, and establishing large scale multi-physics modeling facilities for Geohazard research at the University of you know, the, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Um, Professor Ying as, has a several serving roles. Um, he was the vice president of the International Society for Computer Methods and Advances in Geomechanics, uh, IACMAG, uh, since 2005. And he's the founding editor, co editor of uh, International Journal of Geomechanics, uh, uh, a journal of the ACE. He received uh, several numerous uh, honors and award, including the John Booker Medal in 2008, Chandra Desai Excellence Award in 2011, and Outstanding Contribution Medals uh, in 2017 from 
and all from IACMG. He received the Mao Yixian Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering Youth Award uh, in 2000. And his model, his model, an um, elastic viscoplastic model uh, and its application in consolidation analysis of soil, uh, which um, was published in Geotechnique in, in 1996. And that paper was considered a milestone contribution uh, in Geotechnique. And he developed the 2011 Huang Wenxi lecture in China, Chinese mainland. And he was ranked uh, the top 88 among 58,000 West scientists in geological and, and geomatics engineering in the world, uh, according to Stanford University researchers, my right, research. Alrighty, so, uh, you know, the lecture wouldn't be successful without support of our sponsors. So I am very great, you know, I'm very grateful to the sponsor, uh, to the sponsors, you know, this year, right? Dawidak and WSP. Um, so the Soil Mechanics Foundation divisions has uh, several, you know, has several venues to raise the funding uh, in the past few years um, through the lectures, through the workshops. And then we have been using this revenue to sponsor, primarily to sponsor uh, like a student activity, graduate student activities across Canada. Uh, for example, the Geo War Competition, right, in the National Conference and Geo War Competition <clears throat> uh, local student societies. So I'm great. I'm grateful to the sponsorship for the uh, from the industry partners. All right. So without any further ado, I would like to you know would like to uh, introduce Dr. Jianhua Yin for presenting the fourth distinction lecture of the uh, Soil Mechanics and Foundations Division. Um, okay, it's all yours, hey, Professor Yin. Hey. Okay, okay. Let me uh, to share my screen. And uh, if five, is this okay? Can right? We, um, yeah. Can you see this full screen? You are not sharing yet. Oh no! Let me yeah. see. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share. You're right. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can see the PowerPoint slide. Uh, if you push F five, push F five, and then just pop out. Pop up this uh, slide. I push it a five. Let me see. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Oh yeah. Great. Okay. That's great. That's great. Uh, I think that the can you remove the top bar uh, so I can see people can see the full screen of my PPT. I don't know. Okay. Yes. Can you remove it? Can you see? I I can see the full screen of your PowerPoint. Okay, but uh, but I can see a bar. Okay, in in my in my PPT. Yeah. Okay. Let me how to remove it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe I start. And uh, first of all. Um, I wanted to thank uh, the Soil Mechanics Foundation's division in wanting me to give uh, this uh, really prestigious uh, lecture. Uh, you can see my uh, the talk title. Uh, I will talk about uh, a fully coupled numerical methods and simple methods uh, with examples. Okay, and uh, actually my talk is related uh, recent uh, fifth edition of Canadian Foundation engineer, engineer Manual, you know, the editors. And actually, my talk is very much related to chapter seven, which is written by Dr. Bernard Fernandez, okay? As contributed, I made contributions to two subsections, uh, 7.9.21, 7.9.2.2, okay, related to the sediment calculations uh, for foundations of clay soils. Okay, you can see the titles of two subsections. So um, back to uh, uh, the contents of my talk from introduction, from the two methods, uh, from fully coupled methods, uh, simple methods, uh, general methods, uh, finally to conclusions and remarks. Uh, 
because my talk is related, let me see, I, I see the full screen, uh, cover my talk. Because um, because a bar in the top uh, cover the top of my of my PPT. Okay, uh, the first one introduction. Actually, my talk is related to transformation sediment. Uh, the my methods are proposed actually are for saturated soils. Okay, saturated soils. Uh, saturated soils actually. Saturated soil is a mix of incompressible soil particles. Uh, So-called incompressible is relatively speaking. And uh, the voids which are filled with incompressible water, also relatively speaking, okay? When we calculate the concentration sediment, we have the now effect stress principle uh, well. And the effect principles, I don't go to the details. Uh, you know this one from soil mechanics. Uh, effect, effect stress actually defined by the particle contact force divided by area. This is sigma prime, okay? The total effect of stress. Uh, in early days, actually people have to measure the total stress and the pull pressure uh, from this equation to get the effect stress. Uh, in 2020, uh, Yin and his uh, co-workers have uh, invented a new device and they can measure effect stress directly. Okay, this is some new uh, advancement in this area. Uh, effect stress are very important because effect stress control both deformation and shear resistance. Okay, I don't want to go details to save time. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, effect stress principle is due to uh, Professor Tashaki and also one dimensional consolidation theory. Okay, I will talk about more in this area. And also, uh, his former colleague, uh, Professor Peck, uh, we met him in 1998 in Taipei. Okay, when now was quite young. And uh, regarding consolidation, the, the simple method, especially the simple method is basically for one dimensional straining consolidation. One dimensional straining uh, is because all the deformation is in vertical direction only, including water flow. And this we need to the case in the field. The soil layer is relatively uniform and uh, the surcharge loading is also relatively uniform. So, the deformation, concentration, water flows are in one in vertical direction only. This is what we call one dimensional straining, only one strain in vertical direction. And we can take the soil samples from field, put in the odometer, and with confined wind, okay, we can have a drainage in the top and the bottom to simulate the one dimensional straining in the field condition. This is a very conventional odometer test. This is a photos of odometers. And um, you, I said the soil layer is relatively uniform, and you apply a uniform surcharge is also relatively uniform. So deformation strains are in the water direction. And here I want to say when you apply uniform stress surcharge, say immediately, or in rapid loading, doesn't matter, which will generate a uh, excess pore pressure, UE is excess pore pressure. We also have an existing water table. If water table is stable, then we have a static pore pressure. And static pore pressure is stable, no change with the time, but excess pore pressure due to surcharge loading, due to dewatering, whatever, is uh, excess pore pressure is unstable, which will dissipate with the time. And this dissipation progress will generate sediment of the foundation, okay? And this, uh, uh, you know, the picture to show the process, I don't go into details. Uh, the sediment of uh, structures on clay soils is well known, okay, uh, by the people, uh, including very famous example, the Tower of Pisa. You can see the Tower of Pisa was built on the soft soil ground. You can see in the layer here, the sandy clay, upper clay, is the clay soils. So consolidation, creep sediment are very important. And you can see in the past the history, the tower settled more than three meters incline, of course, now in 2000, the tower was stabilized by some um, methods. I visit this tower in 2012, 2000. Uh, th uh, this, uh, this is my son, okay? When we visit, we took a photo. But this is a good example. Uh, anyway, uh, structures on clay foundation soils. Another example I wanted to mention, uh, also very famous, uh, the sediment are huge. 
is a Kansa International Airport and uh, two artificial islands for runway one, runway two. Uh, this is a Kansa International Airport in Japan. And this is a runway one, runway two. Actually, the, uh, the ground improvement by saying compaction piles were only done in the, for the top source. On the bottom, actually, no improvement. The layers, uh, the thickness of all layers together is, is more than, even more than uh, 300 meters. Okay, it is a very deep deposit. I want to say is a sediment for the first runway. And um, when people build uh, field materials from the seabed to above a sea level, uh, you can see up to say 2012. Um, okay, um, uh, no, no, uh, 1990, actually the, the, the construction field was uh, all finished. And uh, the, that means the work load is a near constant. But you can observe sediment, okay, sediment continued to develop with time. Actually, first runway opened in 1994 here. Even after the first runway opened, you can see a very huge uh, post construction sediment, huge, a few meters. Okay, it's a very, it, it's a problem, problematic. Okay. And very interesting is uh, in 1990s, uh, people predict the sediment in the yellow line. Okay, no more than, okay, it's five meters, six meters, no more than six meters, okay, by the calculation from the paper published. But unfortunately, the sediment measured is more than seven, more than eight meters. The big, huge difference, the error, relative error is more than 34%, a few meters difference, okay? This is something wrong with the calculation methods. I believe a few reasons. One of the reasons is the method used in prediction, maybe something wrong. The creep compressions, uh, creep whisk compression was not properly uh, are considered in the early calculations. Uh, I visited this uh, first runway in 2008. You can see the photo was taken by me to compensate the large sediment. They use the hyd hydraulic jack to check up the platform, then put some dead weight. Okay, on the bottom to compensate the sediment. I think this is not a, a good uh, way uh, to do so, uh, to, 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 to make a conversation. Not a good way. People should consider from the beginning, okay, from the design, for the construction, rather than have this kind of measures, okay, to reduce uh, the, the sediment, okay? So the first runway, the second runway, when uh, people build the second runway, I believe they learned a lesson. So for the second runway, they apply the surcharge time much, much longer, okay, much, much longer. So you can see the, the sediment, uh, I can I cannot see the top, okay, my, very strange. How to turn off the, the top bar, I don't know. Uh, anyway, for the second runway, um, you know, the sediment is very big. You can see it's more than 40 meters, but because they will pass the chart for a longer duration, so that the post-construction is smaller. So we net the sediment occur as much as possible, okay, to, to, uh, uh, the bar keeps the surcharge longer so that the post uh, sediment, construction sediment is smaller. Even the total sediment is very huge, but the post construction, construction sediment is small. So this is good, okay? This is a, a improvement of the previous design of runway one. In Hong Kong, actually, we make uh, we build a lot of uh, reclamations. In Hong Kong, you can see the the red areas, including Hong Kong uh, International Airport, and also in the area, Ma San area, where I, I live in Hong Kong. And in early days, you can see also huge sediment. Okay, this old uh, my cellular form. So it's create sediment is also issue in Hong Kong. And for for the first runway. You know, for Hong Kong International Airport, for the for two on old runways, they remove all the soft soils. We uh, fill back the, the, the sand. So the post construction sediment is small. For third runway, uh, uh, Hong Kong, we don't remove the soft marine deposit. Instead, people use a, a deep cement mix method to input soft soil here. So sediment is also very much under control, but this third runway is still not open yet, okay? But uh, sediment, we have to wait and see what's the sediment, okay? For the third runway. And what, why we have a creep? 
this very much we need to clay a uh, microstructures, okay, clay. Uh, actually, the clay surface uh, carries a uh, negative uh, uh, charge, electrical charge. The water's molecular has two poles. Uh, one is a positive, one is a negative. So the clay surface uh, is a negative uh, electrical charge. We attract the, the water molecular to the surface. This is what we, we call absorbed water on the clay particles, uh, which will flow. Actually, it's actually a viscous flow, okay, um, on the effect stress. Uh, from observation, okay, from observation point of view, if we do the autonomy test, we apply a constant load, and we can observe the compression development with the time. Of course, compression will get stable because the compression is on the confined condition, okay, no failure, but it's getting stable. But this compression will take a long, long time. Okay, this is what we, what we define the phenomena of a creep on the constant load. Okay, and the deformation, physical deformations are due to observed water, clay particles. More important is uh, the clay skeleton. Physical deformation of clay skeleton. We calculate the sediment or foundation. Basically, is the deformation of clay skeleton. Okay, not the clay particles, the clay. Skeleton, okay, compression of clay skeleton is here. You can see the skeleton structures. Okay. And uh, we can measure uh, the sediment and also the 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 creep compressions from automatic test. I mentioned before. For example, for automatic test, the, uh, the soil specimen is about uh, 20 millimeters, diameter normally is 50 millimeter. On the constant load, then we can observe voice ratio decrease with time. Time normally we plot time in log scale. And this turning point is uh, normally we call this turning point is the uh, end of primary consolidation, the end of primary consolidation. So in this period, we call uh, this period a primary consolidation period because the excess population is bigger than zero. Uh, after this point, the excess population is near zero. Okay. And uh, if you, you Excess pore pressure is near zero, means the vertical effect stress is constant. Effect, effect stress is constant, but it's, we still can observe continuous uh, compression. People say this is a creep, very clearly this is a creep, and uh, people call this a secondary uh, compression period, means after primary concentration, okay? This is a secondary. And one big question is, do we have any creep in this primary concentration, okay? Uh, in, in one theory, what we call hypothesis A theory, which consider no viscous compression in this area, okay? Only viscous compression in the primary concentration period, okay? This is a hypothesis A, I will discuss more later. But the new understandings are, we also have a viscous deformation in this, in this area, even though the vertical effect is not constant, but Vertical effect is increasing with the time in this period. We also have a viscous deformation in this period. This is a new understanding, okay? New understanding, that actually is correct. And this slope actually is a good indication of uh, uh, the, the degree of uh, secondary compression or degree of creep. This slope, okay, in the log scale, this is a slope. is what we call C alpha E. C alpha E, it defined in terms of voice ratio. We can have also C alpha epsilon defined in terms of strain. Okay, actually C alpha epsilon, C alpha E are related each other. You can see the relationship here. C alpha epsilon, C alpha E related to each other. But the C alpha E in terms of word ratio is uh, commonly used by engineers. Okay, so keep remind remember the slope is a good indication of a degree of a creep. And you can see uh, the CFE for different soils around the world. Okay, okay, I don't go to details. Uh, for Hong Kong marine clay, CFE actually varies from 0.3% to 2%. Okay, is in in the middle areas. Okay, not the very the creep is not very significant, but we do have the creep. Uh, let me see. I still. I don't know how to turn off the top bar. Very, very strange. Because the top, the top bar covers the top of my slide. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm not really happy. 
You know, so you know the, 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 the you can, bar. You can, yeah, you get the green bar, right? The green bar you're talking about. Green bar. Yeah, a you can bar. just drag it. You can just drag to the side, and then you can see your top. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know how to do it. Just drag it. Just hold up, hold on it, and drag to the side, and then you can remove the bar. But the bar will always be there. The green bar will, will always be there. Okay, this is not the better part. Of this uh, this meeting is being recorded. This bar is still there. You know. Yeah. Okay. Are you uh, this uh, the meeting? Can you move this to the side away? I don't know. Yeah, I can see one small, uh, uh, like uh, you know, that uh, like uh, minus sign, and you can right click on that and you can like hide thumbnail video. Which you is minus sign? Chance. Yeah, on the top, there will be minus sign and right click on that. thumbnail video. On my PPT, I cannot see the, the minor. Oh, sorry. Oh. So, so I, Professor, Yin, let me suggest one thing. Can you share your screen instead? Instead, of, uh, oh, um, oh, maybe not. So we still can. If you can share your screen, uh, we can give a suggestion. You mean I uh, I stop sharing? You mean? No, let's just share your screen instead of share your. Oh, presentation. share my screen. Or share or rather than share yeah. my uh PPT. You mean? Yeah, yeah, and then uh, let let us see what a uh, uh, block you and then, okay, okay. So... Let me let me see. Uh, uh, uh no, I share my screen. Yeah, sh now share your screen. And it's so which uh, one block this you? This is my PPT. I share my PPT. I I I just share my screen. Actually, we, I'm sharing my screen anyway. Um, you know, the top bar still cover my, my top, uh, my top, <laughs> my top slide. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, we, are the, we are the viewer. With viewer, we can remove it and they can see, still see your full screen. No problem at all. Okay, anyway, anyway but, yeah, it's not for, for me. Okay, anyway, anyway, we go ahead. I don't want to uh, waste the time. Uh, I remember the top area, so it's, it's okay. Okay, I, I'll continue. I'll continue. Okay, sorry about this one. And uh, actually, you can see the real automated test data on the different stage of loading. Uh, you can see the, this is uh, the real data from uh, automated test on Hong Kong Marine K. Uh, what I want to say is the CRFIE is smaller in over consolidation stage. So this is what I want to say. Okay, you can see this is a turning point, approximate turning point. So here, here is in over consolidation stage. So the slope. The CRFIE, I mentioned the CRFIE before, right? It's uh, smaller, it's quite a flat. But we go to this area, it's in so-called uh, normal consolidation state. The creep is, is is bigger. You can see the slope is, is steeper, okay, steeper. This is what I want to say, okay, um, the, the point. So we come back to uh, the two methods, okay, uh, used uh, in the past and also new methods. Uh, first one, I want to introduce uh, uh, the old methods, uh, what we call hypothesis A methods. And this method, uh, can, the equation of this method can be written here. Okay, this is a total sediment, uh, which is equal to the primary concentration sediment plus secondary compression sediment. The primary concentration sediment is equal to UV is final. UV is the average degree of concentration. Is if is the final sediment at the end of primary concentration here yeah, at the end of primary concentration okay and in this period the time is smaller than t u e o p in the field okay e o p okay means this one e o p the end of primary concentration means this period if the time in this period the secondary compression is zero okay this is a key point when the time is bigger than t u e o p in the field that means the time beyond here, then we have a secondary concentration coefficient and a secondary compression here. This is all about the hypothesis A method. The important thing is no creep, no secondary compression in this primary concentration period. So which consider no creep here. So it's wrong, it's wrong. So normally hypothesis A method uh, underestimate the sediment because they ignore the compression here. So that's, a, that's the main point. There's a no history regarding hypothesis A methods or hypothesis B methods. Uh, in from early days from neither in 
77, okay, you can see this plot. This is a really important plot. This is local time. And the vertical is a uh, uh, strain. It's a strain, I mentioned it before, right? The strain is related to voice ratio. So for different thickness of soil sample, for the thin sample, we get a curve now, this one, thin sample, for example, in odometer test, the, the specimen specimen only 20 millimeter. In, in the thick specimen can be one meter, can be 10 meters, especially in the field condition can be a few meters. So according to A methods, this is turning point, this is turning point is a horizontal, is a horizontal. That means, that means, you know, this is on the, the same vertical stress. The vertical stress is constant. This is a strain, is a constant, but we have different time. So the effect stress and the strain, the time relationship for this up to this point is constant. Nothing to do with the time. Okay, that's the, the, because this is nothing to do with that is the horizontal. But beyond this point, we have a pre secondary compression. This is a hypothesis A. So inside at this point and inside the stress strain is uh, unique. But after this time, after this one, we have a time dependent. So after this time, then the, the stress strain is dependent on time. It's a clearly a contradiction. As a clear contradiction, okay, how can a soil be time independent up to here, but be beyond a certain time, then it's time dependent. It's a clear contradiction. I don't want to go into details, okay? But a hypothesis B is different. Hypothesis B for the thin sample, turning point is here. For the very thick sample, turning point is here. So this strain, the strain is depending on the time. It's very logic, okay? So I don't want to go into details. And um, Okay, yeah, more discussions about Jim Korsky, 1995, uh, show the same points. Uh, by the way, I want to mention uh, uh, the Professor Serge Louville, he actually also consider uh, hypothesis A methods has contradictions. Okay, you can see uh, his papers, okay, published uh, before. Uh, so Professor Serge Louville in, in Quebec, he is also strongly against hypothesis A, and he has done very good work in this, in this area, uh, Professor Serge Louville, okay? We all, he also consider hypothesis A has a contradiction. So we, he support hypothesis B, or oh, this is the case in Canada, okay? Uh, I also want to go back to the history. Uh, in early days, in 1960s, you know, people consider, in 1960s, okay, not today, people consider the Earth is the center of the solar system. And majority consider Earth is the uh, center of the solar system. Only one person at that time, Galilei, okay? He considered the sun is the center of the solar system. You, you know the history, okay? I, I consider this uh, history is quite interesting, quite similar, you know, the argument regarding hypothesis A and hypothesis B. But now, I believe now people in the modern time, people consider the sun is the center of the solar system, okay? I believe nowadays 99% of people, okay, 99% of people consider hypothesis B is correct. But unfortunately, in some manuals, in some courts, unfortunately still use hypothesis A, including manuals and the courts in, in China and some other countries. So Canada is making a good progress in the new foundation manual which has adopted hypothesis B methods. So this is a, a big advancement uh, by the Canadian Geological Society. I think uh, we are on the correct side, okay, CGAs, okay? This is a good history, I want to go back. And uh, actually nowadays, including the people in Norway, like Dr. Degago, uh, he also supports uh, hypothesis B, not hypothesis A. Hypothesis A has clear contradiction, okay? For example, I want to go back again. Uh, sigma V sig, uh, the stress uh, strain is unique at this point, but after this, the, you know, is it is not is, is, is not unique. Okay, a uh, soil uh, is the time the behavior is the time independent up to this point, but after this point, the stress strain behavior is the time dependent. It's a clear contradiction. I don't want to go into details. And uh, you can see more works done by uh, Dr. Dagato. I want to know go to details. He support. 
I think uh, the uh, people in Europe, people in Europe all support Hypus B. I talked to Dr. Zagato by email, and he also came to see me in uh, in January this year. And he also fully support Hypus B, not Hypus A. I believe uh, people in Europe all support Hypus B. Okay, you don't see any um, any equations in the manual in the Euro code. Okay, in the Euro code and uh, in the uh, British standard, which adopt Hypus A, not anymore. Okay, not anymore. But unfortunately, in some countries, including Chinese mainland. Okay. Okay, my talk is related to uh, Chapter Seven. And I mentioned it before, chapter seven is written by uh, Fe uh, 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 Dr. Fenelis. He also mentioned the Hapus A, even though he introduced Hapus A in the manual, you know, because he's, uh, he read uh, chapter seven, uh, my two subsections were edited later. When he wrote the chapter seven, he pointed out the contradictions of Hapus A, okay, in his early writings. He mentioned the contradiction of Hapus A. I don't know the details. Okay, and he suggests um, a new, he included the new development of the work done by me. Okay, so in this section, he mentioned introduced my two sections. Okay, it's still cover very, really... I mean, I mean, the, the, the boss cover my slide anyway. So go back to um. But the fully coupled methods, I want to introduce two methods first. One of the fully coupled methods I mentioned in uh, 7.9.21. Fully coupled methods actually is a very, is a method based on a uh, continuum mechanics. So it's our consider a uh, continu porous uh, continuum, okay? And our source are fully saturated. The two basic assumptions, then we can derive five equations. We can use five equations, okay? Now stress equilibrium, uh, strain displacement displacement relationship relationship equation effect trace principle equation and more important is we need a good constitutive equation which should be elastic viscoplastic uh, models not the linear elastic model okay should use the elastic viscoplastic model okay use this model and the Darcy's law is also valid for the seepage uh, solve all the equation together this is what we call fully coupled methods. Okay, people, you, people do this one, um, many people do this one, okay, do this one, okay. The difference here in the concentration equation analysis, we have to use a proper elastic with repression model. You can see all the equations, I don't go details, okay. In the BO theory, BO theory, in the theory, they use a linear isotopic linear equation, isotopic linear elastic equation, okay. This one cannot consider creep. So we replace this equation, this constant equation by a uh, visco elastic, elastic visco plastic equation. That's it. All others equations are keep no change. Okay. I want to go back uh, uh, to this slide. Go to this slide. Actually, uh, I believe many people know a commercial so software uh, practice. In practice, practice can do consolidation analysis, and practice this is a soft soil creep model. Okay, a soft soil creep model. Okay, this soft soil creep model uh, published in 1999. Okay, it's here. Are very similar to uh, Yin and Graham's three dimensional elastic risk pressure model. Okay, here the parameters 95 percent are, 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 are the same. Okay, but my three dimensional uh, EV model was published in my thesis 1990 a journal paper published in 1999. So my work, uh, original work in this area was much earlier than what uh, Professor Vermeer and Dr. Leo, okay, they, they publish. They publish a conference paper, okay. But you should have a confidence, okay, use a practice. If I uh, want to do analysis, consolidation analysis on the clay soils, you can use a practice and choose a soft soil cream model. So it's okay. It's very much similar to my model, okay. I just want to let you know. And go back to one dimensional case. Uh, I mentioned it before, right? Uh, Tasaki actually proposed uh, one dimensional consolidation theory. In his theory, consolidation theory, they use a uh, linear elastic model. Okay. But uh, Yin and Graham published a paper in Geotechnic in 1996. Uh, we use elastic with the model. 
Okay, from the five equations, we finally come to two equations. One is this equation, another one is, is this constant model. We solve two equations together, then we can get the excitable pressure distribution, we can get sediment. So this is all about a fully covered methods for one dimensional case. Okay, for three dimensional case, you have to probably use, you can use commercial software practices, okay? I don't want to go into details. And uh, how the A methods, I think, I think uh, nowadays only, sorry, I have to mention his name. Uh, Professor Mazzari is probably the only person in the world, okay, to support hypothesis A. Probably the only person. Okay, but most people support hypothesis B, okay, and uh, there are a number of uh, enough risk function models, including another model by Professor Dr. Yue and Professor Andrew Vito in MRT. I met him, okay, in Hong Kong before. We discussed about this one. His model also support hypothesis B, okay, I don't want to go into details. So, this is a or one-dimensional elastic risk pressure model, which is considered also a nonlinear rheological model. You can see it's a nonlinear model. If you want to compare with uh, with old uh, Maxwell linear rheological model, its structure is very similar. Okay, this is old real, linear rheological model is a spring a dashboard. Uh, uh, the spring is elastic, elastic dashboard. Visco dashboard is also linear, but in Yin and Graham's uh, model, this is nonlinear, even for elastic part, you nonlinear. This risk of plus part is also nonlinear. I don't go into details, okay? So the, this work was done in during my peer study at the University of Manitoba, okay? So this is uh, my, my work. The models are structures very similar, but this is nonlinear, this is linear, okay? And we have solved uh, concentration equations uh, using the elastic risk of plus model published this paper in 1996. Uh, you can see the comparison of all simulations and data. And uh, I don't want to go into details. Uh, we in very good agreement. I don't want to go into details. And uh, people consider this paper, okay? This paper, okay? Consider this paper a milestone contributions, okay, in geotechnic. One of milestone contributions, okay? One of milestone contributions in the history, in the past 60 years, okay? Uh, received high remarks on this work. And um, more, okay, I don't go into details. And even some Japanese professor also apply our elastic with the model for consolidation analysis of uh, soft soils. You can see uh, in this model, this is actually in grass model, in the data, the ca calculated results are in very good agreement with test data. If a Tasaki theory, no consolidation of creep, so it stop here. If we add secondary compression is here. Okay, so difference will be very big. But uh, the model results from Yin and Graham are in very good agreement with the data. For this uh, uh, very soft source, I don't go to details. details. And uh, Professor uh, David Nash and his student also apply all models for analysis of embankment on the soft source. Okay, I don't, you can see the field applications. Okay, I don't, don't go to details. And also consider all models are, are very good. Okay, very good. I don't go into details. Okay. So, so far I mentioned to you actually the fully covered methods for three dimensional case, for one dimensional case. But this is, this method is not easy to use. Even for a practice, it's, it's a very complicated uh, geotechnical software. You need the knowledge. You need a good um, uh, experience to use it. So fully covered methods looks very really good, but they're not easy to use. So we have to think about other methods, okay? Other methods. So other method is here. Let's so go back to subsection uh, two, uh, a simple method for calculation analysis of KD source. And uh, for one dimensional case, I discussed the one dimensional case first is, uh, you can see, the, you can see the difference of this, uh, the simple methods uh, compared to uh, half post A methods, okay? The total sediment is equal to primary concentration sediment and the creep sediment are uh, two items. The primary concentration sediment is equal to U, is the average degree of concentration. The A is final, this is the final sediment at the end of primary concentration, plus the creep is alpha U, uh, beta, A is creep final. I will discuss how to calculate this one. And this one is for time from uh, T0 is the parameter I discussed later. And uh, below the, the time at 
end of a primary consolidation in the field. This is a primary consolidation period. Primary consolidation period. So we have adding here. In hypothesis A, P is zero. Okay. When time is more than the, the T EOP in the field, th this item becomes this one, becomes this one. This one is the same, but here we have another item is A script delay. D means delayed. Uh, the meaning of all the polymers are explained. You can here is here is here. So we have a uh, uh, is final and creep creep final uh, creep. This is a delay. Okay, delayed by a certain time. And how to determine all the parameters? Um, some items I will discuss details. Some items will go quick because the time. It's it, it's it's really limited for my presentation today, okay? And uh, I I talked to uh, uh Professor Den uh, today, and um, he will uh send you all my PPT files and also my example files and uh, four papers related to my talk, okay? So you you need time to study my PPT and uh, my example files and my papers, okay? So need need some time to digest my presentation today. So I it's impossible to for me to explain everything uh, very clearly to you today, okay? Sorry about this one, okay? And also in my presentation, I try to use the same parameters as what are in the Canadian Foundation Engineering Manual. So the parameters are, are exactly the same, including equation number. You see, 7.21 is the same number in the manual. So it's easier for you to follow up, okay? So, how many polynomials I need is a simple method. Okay, we need the CR, uh, CCR. C CCR is a compression index for the for the soil in the over concentration state. For here, yeah, this is the over concentration state. Because the Dr. Fenelis use uh, CCR, so I use the same polynomial. Okay, but actually other people use a CR, CE, or CS. So you are all the same. They have the same meaning, okay? But I use the same parameter in, in the manual. A CC compression index is for here. For the compression index in the normal concentration period is also commonly used. Sigma P is a pre-concentration pressure is a turning point. This is a turning point. We have a Sigma P. We also have a epsilon P, the strain, corresponding to this pre-concentration point, okay? We have C alpha. C alpha actually here is C alpha E defined in terms of voice ratio. You see voice ratio, the log scale time, the slope. But in the manual, we use the C alpha. The meaning actually C alpha is C alpha E. Okay. We have a one parameter T0. Okay. You, if you go back here, we have we have a T0 here. What's the meaning of T0? T0 is a parameter. In the manual, I say the one day. You ask me why is one day? Because this curve in the local stress, in the vertical strain, all the point on the point here, all have one day duration. Okay. When you plot the point here in this in this figure, all the points have one day duration. That means in this curve, we choose the point here is one day. Here's the one day to plot the point here. So all the points here have one day already. So the T0 should be one day, keep the logically consistent. Okay, that's one one day. Uh, some people say, I, I don't want to use one day. I want to use 10 minutes. Or I want to use 50 minutes. You have to keep it consistent. Okay, it's okay. Okay, T0, that's the meaning, okay? E0 is the initial worst ratio before you apply additional loading. Alpha or beta are two parameters in the equation here, can you see here? Alpha and beta, two parameters based on all study. Alpha, beta are equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.3. And why? Why? Because we compare the values for this simple methods with the other methods, with the rigorous fully coupled methods, we find alpha equal to 0 0.8, beta equal to 0 0.3 are, are good. But actually, this alpha may be very from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, maybe wait a little bit, but that will not change the whole story uh, much. So you can have a further study on alpha. But if you use alpha 0 0.8, no problem. Okay, use the beta 0 0.3, no problem. 
But want to refine your prediction, for example, you can have a first study, maybe alpha is 0 0.7, 0 0.75, it's okay. K is the permeability, permeability, okay? You know that. And uh, efficient P is this point here, the sigma P, uh, efficient P. Efficient P can be calculated by this equation. If we know initial stress, efficient R, sigma, you know, initial point, for example, initial point we know, then we know the slope. That's the CR, CCR. Then you know if uh, P concentration pressure, so efficient P can be calculated. So I don't consider efficient P is a parameter which can be calculated. Very important is, very important is, in all the equations, okay, I'll go back. In all the equations here, we need to determine U, 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 U. U is the average degree of concentration. How do you determine U? Okay, you can determine U from different, from some analytic solution for some chart. But, but when you determine U, you need a CV. CV is the vertical concentration coefficient, CV. CV is expressed by permeability divided by gamma W, unit weight of water, MV, compressibility of the source. So you have the K, we know it is a given, is a permeability, but we have to know MV. MV in this simple method is the back calculated by this. So it's back calculated, or it's not a parameter given, it's back calculated. If we know delta epsilon, we do know delta stress, then this is back calculated. Okay, this is very important, okay? So for example, for nodding to here is a, is a curve, but you can determine delta epsilon, you know total stress increment, so MV can be calculated. If MV is calculated, you know permeability, you know MV, then CV can be determined. For CV, you can find the yield. This is a very important point, okay? Very important point, okay? And uh, uh, S final, you see, S final is determined by the CCR, the compression index in the over concentration range, normal concentration range for different cases. I don't know the details. You should know this one. For example, from point one to four, point one to four goes through this turning point, Determined by this. If I just load from point one to point two, doesn't mean from point one to point two, you're all in the over concentration stage, only one slope, it is determined by this one. If the load is from point three to point four, determined by this equation. If for unloading, unloading, say for unload from point, point four to point six, then follow this slope, the same as this slope, but this one is negative. Reloading again is also can be determined, determined so that as final. Can be determined but this is uh, the cc ccr uh, cc index uh you know this one okay i don't go to the details oh more important is s creep final s creep final i hope today i take a few minutes to derive the equations to determine c creep final today because of my simple methods all the equations can be derived in a few minutes for example, regarding S creep final, um, we have to consider different scenario. For example, if we load, for, for example, for point one to point five or to point four, the final point, no matter initial, no matter in, me initial, the final point is in normal concentration state. Okay, this is a CC, CC, normal concentration state. So final point is at a normal concentration state. Doesn't matter initial, okay, doesn't matter initial. Then C S creep is given by this. Okay, it's so simple. C alpha E over one plus E zero, log T over T zero, T is one T zero one day, H is the thickness. That's it. That's it. Okay, that's it. Okay. I don't go into detail. You can see some more, more explanations. Okay, more important is this one. The final point is at the over concentration stage. For example, if the point one is the initial point, on the loading, come back to point two. Your point two is uh, smaller than pre concentration pressure. So point two is in over concentration state. How do you determine a quick final? This is very critical, the most difficult part. Okay, a quick final is given by 
is this equation. Okay, you can see I can put it this way. Uh, first one, C alpha E, this is minus, okay, minus. This is C alpha E over one plus E zero, log time T zero plus T E two, and this is thickness. What's the T E two? This is creep determined from the two apply to here, the compression from here to here, compression. And this put two apply is a back, back extension of the normal constant line back, back, back to here. The same slope, back to here. Imagination and creep from two apply to this point. Imagination, okay? This creep is from two point apply to here. Further, further, from two, further creep here. This is what we want to determine. Because the loading from one to two, then we have a, on the certain duration creep from two to here. So we want to determine this creep. This creep is a total creep here, two apply to here, minus two apply to two, minus. So there's a total creep from two apply to here, minus creep from two apply to here, the difference. Oh, this is a very important point, okay? Very important point. The difference, creep, so finally, we come back, come to this expression is the C alpha E over one plus E zero log T zero T E. This time is from here to here, okay, to here. Over T zero plus T E two is the time from here to here. This is a very important equation in this simple method. And keep in mind, keep in mind, this C alpha E is a secondary compression coefficient in the normal concentration state, right? I mentioned it before, this C alpha E is the secondary compression coefficient in this normal con con concentration state. For example, from two apply to here, from four to here, in the normal con concentration state, C alpha E. But the same C alpha E can be used to calculate the creep in over concentration range, yeah? over concentration range, only the same parameter, but in this way, in this way. This is an important contribution in the simple method. So this is C alpha E in other way, in um, other way to say this one. C alpha E in no, from the normal concentration state can also be used to calculate the creep in over concentration range by this equation. Okay, here we have a TE2. Now you want to ask me how to determine TE. How to determine TE2? TE is equal to TE2 plus additional time. This is the additional time, TE2 additional time, so the TE. TE. Then you will ask me how to determine TE2. That's a critical parameter here. TE2, I show you the equation, how to derive today. According to equivalent time definition by Yin and Graham, uh, keep in mind, V is a specific volume equal to one plus T zero, according to the time concept, the total strain can be equal to one part and the second part, okay? This part, for example, how do I get my pen? Oh, anyway, uh, difficult to get my pen now. The total strain, say, say here, uh, uh, say, say six here, uh, any, uh, point, any point, six here. The, the total strain come back to six, for example, the total strain equal to this strain, this is square point, is from this one. Then from this here to here is given by this. Okay, any point. For example, I say point of five. The strain at point of five is this equation is still valid. The, the strain at point of five is the, the strain at five pi is given by this. From five pi to five is given by this. So this equation is the general equation for we for us to determine epsilon at any point. No matter any point in this figure, any point. This is a very important concept. I developed in 1989 in University of Manitoba. Okay. So for this equation, then we can determine TE. Okay. You can see I keep everything here, ch no change. I determine TE. So for this equation, I derive this one, derive this one, uh, back to this, back to this one. I, I ignore the middle steps. Okay. Today. So finally, TE is equal to is related to strain and stress. So any point, so for any point, if we know strain and stress, the corresponding TE can be determined. Okay, this is a very important equation I derived today. So for TE2 here, we want to know TE2, right? At this point, easy, 
easy. You just substitute sigma 2, epsilon 2 into this equation. Epsilon 2 here, sigma 2 here, see, epsilon 2 here, sigma 2 here, I can determine TU2. So TU2 can be calculated if we know the strain at stress at this point. So now, today, I, we, do, we know how to determine TU2. So, and also uh, T equal to this one. Uh, sub this one into here. T U two is from here. From this equation, we can get uh, the bottom here. Okay, sorry, the the bar covers my 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 PPT anyway. So, so so we can determine uh, T U two. If we know T U two, we can determine S quick final for any point in the over constant state at point two. And uh, keep in mind, okay, keep in mind. I want to tell. T2 is in over constant state, refer to this sigma three, uh, the, the, the point three. If we do the loading from three to point four, to do the unloading to six, you know, this is six is a new point. And this is point four is a new uh, pre-concentration pressure point, is new due to this loading and unloading, okay? For sigma three is also considered to be in the over concentration state, refer to point four. Also, re point five, refer to point four. Point five is also in over concentration state. So that at point two, point five, point six are all in the over concentration state. So we just say use the TEOC, just refer to general case. This equation is in the manual. So that uh, 7.22C. So final, uh, the, the final creep sediment in the over concentration state use the general T in the OC, over concentration state. So we have this equation. It's similar. I just use the TE2, change to uh, TEOC, okay? And the TE2 can be changed to uh, TEOC. That, that's in the equation, okay? Let me see. let me hold more. I don't like it, I don't like it, okay? Oh, it's here. So it's a TEOC. We refer to any point in the over concentration state. So we have this equation in the equation 7.22D. So today you can see, I can derive the equations here. Okay, the, the, the equation in the simple method. Uh, in, in the OC, I don't want to repeat, okay? Very important point is C alpha E from normal concentration state test can be used for calculating the creep in OC state. This is a very important point. That's why I said this equation is very simple. You don't have to get another C alpha E in over constant state. This one parameter is okay, okay? I don't go to details. Oh, go back example. Go back example. Okay, let's consider example one. Say we have a, a soil layers, a four meters thickness, and uh, I can actually the stress increase with the time, in this stress increase time, but I simplify this layer as a, a uniform a initial stress, as you choose the middle point, for example, I use the middle point. This, even though initial stress is changing with the time, increasing with the time, but I use a, just one point in the middle to represent the initial stress for the whole layers, okay? And uh, and uh, say initial, that's the initial water stress is about 30 kBa, consider constant, and the initial strains are zero before loading. Uh, want us to calculate the, the final sediment in two cases, two cases here, case one, case two, I discuss later, uh, for a duration of five years and uh, 50 years, to determine the final sediment at five years and 50 years, using two methods, A method, B methods. Uh, part minutes are given by here, I don't, do, I don't repeat. First one, we have to determine strain can respond to pre concentration pressure, I mentioned before, right? Uh, we know sigma p is here, 60. So epsilon p can be determined to here. The case one, the water stress is suddenly increased to up to 120 kBa. That means increased by 6 kBa. Also keep in mind, okay, keep in mind, the pre concentration pressure is 60. The stress is more than 60. So the final point is in normal concentration state. Okay, so this is the case uh, I discussed before, right? That's the case from point one to point four. So, because this final point is in normal concentration state. So the strain increments 
is equal to this, but this equation is equal to this one, the strain here, okay? Then we know strain increments. We know stress increments. Stress increments is 90. Is 90 is 120 minus 30 is 90. So we know strain increments, we know stress increments, so that MV is the back calculated to be this, okay? Then concentration coefficient is calculated by K, the permeability here, and the gamma W, 9.81 MV is from here, so we can tell me CV is here. Then final sentiment at end of primary concentration is determined by this, is 0.524. I don't want to, uh, it's all in my slides. Okay, here. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, TEO in the field can be determined by TV and D square over CD, CV, we know CV already. And uh, for example, for, for five years, then time factor is 0 0.4. And uh, average, average degree of concentration is 69.8%, uh, but this is a simple equation here. Uh, you can find this one in soil mechanics. Now, this is for five years. For 50 years, a time factor is given by this, is 3.996, uh, UV is 100%, because it is, a, is a, uh, beyond end of primary concentration. Uh, because the final point is the normal concentration state. So A creep is given by this, see, by this one. And so it's equal to this, A creep. Okay, the, the A creep uh, denate is zero because the UV is uh, is smaller than 98%, it's in primary concentration period. This is DNA is zero. But in this case, UV is 100%, it's beyond the primary concentration period. period. So we have DNA one, okay? Uh, you can see the math slide, okay, for the details. So from B methods, by this equation, uh, for five years, we can determine the final sediment is 0 0.45 meters. And for 50 years, the, the B methods is 0 0.65 meters meter okay this is from the simple methods but a methods is the equation here equation here so we don't have uh, any creep here so the uh, the sediment is equal to uv is final given by this one 0 .0, 0 0.365 this is this number but here is 0 0.45 this is smaller okay for 50, 50 years also then we have a secondary compression because it, it go beyond the primary concentration period so the, the, the sediment is 0 0.539. Okay, it's also smaller than this one, smaller. So you can see the comparison of the results from two methods from two cases, five years and 50 years. Oh, second case. Uh, second case, okay, the loading is up to here. Is The loading is, uh, uh, I don't see the, uh, the because they covered here. Because of the final point is in over concentration range, or over concentration range, okay? So this is the second case. Then again, we can determine the from point one to point two, is from here to here. We can determine straight increments by this, okay? And then MV is calculated by this is delta, epsilon delta sigma equal to this. The CV is also calculated by this. Uh, the sediment is equal to this. Is small because uh, from 1.1 to 0.2, and uh, for UV, uh, uh, I define okay, I define the end of primary concentration by U equal to 98 percent. So we can determine TV, then we can determine the TEOP in the field is about nine years or five years, and uh, we can also determine epsilon P. And more important is we have to determine TEOC. I mean, determine here uh, TEOC 4.2. Uh, from the equation, from the calculation, TEO, TEOC is 4.45 years. The physical meaning is, or of course by imagination, meaning is creep from two apply to two here takes 4.45 years. Okay, that's the meaning, meaning, okay? So we know everything here. Uh, then from uh, five years, from 50 years, uh, we can determine it's creep Final equals this one, and a script DNA is also zero because this is in the primary concentration period. It's, 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 this one doesn't occur yet. For 50 years, then we have a, a script final equals this one, a script DNA equals this one. 
Then from this simple methods, we can determine total sediment for five years equals this, for 50 years equals this one. If A methods, oh, by the way, for A methods, because this case, this case, okay, the point of two is in over consolidation state, okay? So that in the A methods, we have to find a CFIE in for the soil creep in over concentrated state. How can you do this one? How can you do so? Of course, you can do a test for the soil creep in over concentrated state. Although you can also make an estimate. Here, I assume S creep E in the over concentrated state is 0 0.006, is much smaller much smaller than 0.018, okay? Because in, in over concentrated state. So I use this one, a smaller CFIE, CFIE, RFE. Then for this method, I can also determine sediment to be 0.03 for five years duration, for 50 year duration, 0.043, and all smaller this one, all smaller this one, okay? So in general speaking, a methods underestimate the sediment, okay? And uh, anyway, you have to, Go back to uh, study my PPT example files um, the, to to uh, try to understand. Okay. Uh, another example is uh, the example two is that uh, want want us to plot the curves for the two cases in example one. You can see the Excel calculation here. I don't go details. Uh, case two Excel calculations. You can get my Excel example files from Professor Den. Okay. Uh, you can see the curves. Sediment versus local time, A method is given here, B method here. This is for normal consolidation case. For over consolidation case, okay, A method here, B method here. So in general speaking, general speaking, A method, A method underestimate sediment, give us a smaller sediment, okay? This is example two. Now, example three, example three, okay, the thickness is still four meters. And uh, we apply a surcharge, uh, 20 kb on the 12 water tables here. Uh, I want to make example three is more realistic, more realistic. So we cannot simplify this uh, this layer. We cannot assume initial stress uniform, or for the whole layer. In fact, sigma r initial effect stress increase linearly with the time, right? So in this case, we consider increase of initial stress increase with the time linearly. But when this is changing, then how do, how do we do calculation? In some other cases, even the source, we have different layers. How can we do calculations? One simple way to do so is to divide the soil into sub-layers, sub -layers, additional sub-layers, okay? And the polymeters are given, values of polymeters are given in the table here. I don't want to go to details. Uh, we consider two cases. One is the OCR equal to one. Okay, sigma P is equal to OCR times sigma I. OCR equal to one. Second case is OCR, OCR equal to 1.5. It's also very realistic. Sigma I increases linear with the time. And you can see the calculation here for OCR equal to one. So you can divide the soya into different layers. This, this, this rule consider the soya to the one layer. When we determine sigma r initial stress at the middle point. Okay, middle point is the two meters, is the, is the middle depth. This case, we divide the soil into two layers, two sub layers. Together, it's still four meters, right? Still four meters, two layers. So which, which, each layer has two meters. In the middle of the top layers is the one meter. The, the, the middle layer, uh, middle point for the second layer, the depth is three meters. Okay, the two layers, two all the calculations. This one divide the soil into four layers. One, two, three, four. The final layer is to divide the soil into eight. Eight layers. One, two, three, four. Do all the calculations. You can imagine if we because the initial stress is changing with the depths. You can imagine if we divide the soil layers into more sub-layers, the accuracy will increase. So finally, you can see up to eight, eight layers. You can see all the calculations here. And also keep in mind, MV is back calculated. CV is also calculated, is here, is here. Sediment can be calculated here. So we choose uh, 
MV, we use the CV from this uh, uh, from this calculation, divide the soil layer into eight sublayers. Okay. Uh, I'll show you here. You can see here, uh, strain or sediment. I uh, should be one layer or two layers, four layers or eight layers. You can see the accuracy increase, getting stable, uh, getting stable. Okay, getting stable, including MV and CV. When the, we have more sub layers, I actually go to horizontal, nearly horizontal. So I choose uh, the values of CV from the, from this calculation, uh, eight sub layers. Okay, I'll show you this one. Then we do calculations using the A method, B methods. A uh, beta, I use uh, 0, 0 0.3 or 1. Alpha, we use 0 0.8. You can see my Excel calculations. I don't know the details. Finally, you can see, and also A method, B methods. Uh, you can see the B methods is here, curve here. And a uh, uh, beta, I choose the alpha 0 0.8, keep a constant. Beta from 0 to 1. You can see if uh, beta use 1, is on the is on is on the is on the bottom is a you, 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 zero point zero is on the bottom here black line. If zero you you put the one is on the upper part upper upper part. Uh, the up beta equals zero point three is the, in the middle area in the middle area. So we can see the beta uh, zero point three is uh, is better. Why is better? Because we have more accurate results from rigorous practices and console simulations. Console is another uh, finite element software uh, which give us better results. So rigorous methods is here. You can see, you can see here the dot, the dot here from console and uh, practice. It, it, it close closer, okay, to results from the two com computer simulations, finite element simulations, okay. But a methods again on the estimate element, okay, on the estimate element, okay. A good examples. This is example three, uh, case one. Uh, for case two, OCR equal to 1.5, again, calculation is here. Calculation here, divide the soil into one layer, two, four, eight. I believe it's more accurate. If we divide soil into eight sub layers, then do calculations regarding sediment. Okay, again, here is OCR equal to, OCR equal to 1.5. This is a simple method here, alpha equal to, 0 0.8, beta 0 0.3 is better. Uh, a method again on the estimate sediment. Okay, so this uh, I don't want to repeat. And for multi layers, uh, you refer to paper here. I don't go to the details. You can refer to papers regarding two layers case. Okay, uh, you, you have to get a U for two layers. I don't go to the details. You can go to analytical solution for two and in. Or you can get uh, you for Martinez for another method by US Department of Navy for Martinez. I don't go to details. Even can consider ramp loading, ramp loading, uh, the two methods. I don't go to details. You can see also simulations by the simple methods in comparison with the uh, rigorous methods from Plexus for two layers. Again, you can see the simple methods are in good agreement with the values from Plexus. But A method again gives smaller sediment. Therefore, one case, this is another case. I don't go to details uh, to save time. And uh, here in the simple methods, we needed to know U. So there are many different ways to find a U. Okay, from the chart or from the simple equations, from two layers, you can you can from the two or in, from multiple layers, you can from US Department of Navy, okay. A, B, C to get a U. And also, by the way, the case I consider no vertical trains. In case we have vertical trains, the simple method still can be used. In, in the, when we have vertical trains, we should use this combined average degree concentration, combined one, which consists of vertical concentration, radio concentration. Okay. So use one, use U in the simple method is still okay. Finally, well, I want to introduce uh, another very good. Uh, solutions is uh, for multiple layers with without vertical trains and uh, those work and prefer intro intro lata. Uh, professor intro lata graduated from University of Manitoba. Okay, by the way, he's now a professor in Australia. He did a PhD with the Professor Morgenstern. Okay, 
I know him very well. They develop analytic solutions for multiple layer of source with without vertical trends. Okay, but this is equations, and they can determine U average for each layers. Okay, and uh, you can see some papers, and uh, then they implement their analytic solutions in Excel file. Okay, input solutions. Then we have when we have this Excel file, you can determine every degree of concentration you are, every degree of concentration for each layer. And uh, if some people are interested in this Excel file for this solution, you contact me individually. I can send it to you. Okay. So you can see a summary of different solutions, methods to find uh, you for different cases. I don't go to details. If we have this one, then we have a general methods for multi layers, multi layers, vertical trends, blah, 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 blah. Then the method is given by here. You can see in uh, 2022, I don't go to details. UI is the average degree of concentration for each layers. You can get a UI from Walker in Trilata, okay? The solution, I don't go into details. You can also find the more details from a book by Yin and Zhu, and all this paper published in 2002 for the general simple method, okay? And this method can be used for very complicated cases. Body layers, zero, small initial effects, result work chain, multi-stage loading, blah, 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 I don't go into details. Okay, we also apply this general method for the case in Hong Kong, uh, a test embankment with the water trains on the multi-stage loading and the uh, cognition results are in very good agreement with the measured data. I don't go the details. I save time. I save more time for your questions, okay? Oh, conclusions now. Uh, final slide, okay? I want to emphasize hypothesis A method, this old method is wrong. Not is not wrong, and on the estimate consolidation sentiment of case soil, this is on the risk side. Okay, rigorous hypothesis methods. That's what I mean. The fully covered methods is correct, but unfortunately difficult to use. If we don't have a commercial software, difficult to use. But fortunately, we propose a simple methods. This method in the Canadian Foundation Engineer Manual, fifth edition, which is easy to use. Okay, the, the is quite accurate. A general similar method has been published, verified, can be used for general cases. I don't go into details. The settlement for the new similar method in the manual are in good agreement with the measured data or from all from fully covered method. Okay, it, you have confidence to use that. It's very good and simple to use. And uh, you can refer to four papers. Uh, you contact Professor Den to get the papers. You can contact Professor Den to get the Excel file for three examples. Professor Den, <laughs> okay, question and answer. My time is okay. Yeah, no time. You're perfect. Perfect timing. Um, yeah, thank Not you. Thank you, okay. thank you very much. Um, uh, well, we we still have about about ten minutes. Um, I will introduce my colleague, my prof uh, Dr. Chen Lin, to lead uh, the Q and A questions. Okay, so Dr. Yes, thank you. Can we'll read the questions for you, uh, Professor Yin. Yeah, please. Uh, so, okay, uh, so uh, uh, thank you, Professor Yin's uh, great presentation. Uh, we have uh, six minutes. Uh, I just uh, checked the chat box. We have a four or five question. So I will read out the question for you. Uh, you can also click the chat uh, at the bottom of the Zoom. And uh, there are four questions there, uh, there too. So first question, let me see. From Andres, uh, Dr. Ying, would it be right to say that the consolidation is a three-dimensional phenomenon? rather than one dimensional process. Can you talk about the one or for which cases is not a one dimensional consolidation a proper uh, okay. uh, supposition? Okay, okay, this is a good question. Uh, I want to say today, the simple method is for one dimensional strain consolidation. 
uh, in my presentation, I explained how to have one dimensional strain conservation. Okay, so conditions are the soil layer is relatively horizontal and the thick is the uniform soil properties uniform in the one layer in horizontal layers can be horizontal layer can be one layer can be two layer can be three layers doesn't matter but horizontality should be uniform thickness properties okay not number one number two when you apply a load on the surface or on the soils uh, the load also should be uniform uh, U UDL uniformly distributed on, on, on the soil layers. So in this case, the compression of water flow all in the water direction, horizontal strength are zero. Okay, so this is a one dimensional strain. Uh, the simple method is for this case. Local, locally, not this one dimensional, like we have water trains, we have water flow into the well, the water drain, water drain, flow in that's asymmetrical case in this case but you have water trains also uniformly installed in the in the ground water trains and this similar method still can be used in this case the u average degree concentration should be a combined average degree concentration which combine the vertical concentration and the radio concentration around the well or around the vertical trains okay so this is also okay but in general speaking, the soils are, in general speaking, is a three-dimensional case. Today, also mentioned the three-dimensional case. In that case, my simple methods can be, cannot be used directly, but you still can try with some uh, minor corrections. Simple method maybe apply a parameter a coefficient maybe still can be used. But for more accurate prediction, you have to use a commercial so software like a practices. Like a Praxis 3D. Praxis 3D can consider the consolidation. Uh, you choose to solve the soil quick model in Praxis 3D consolidation analysis. You can call, you can do calculations for 3D case. Is that my answer okay to you? Okay, <laughs> maybe go to the next question. Okay. <laughs> okay, next question is uh, still from Andres. Uh, according to the 1D EVP model, uh, is the secondary consolidation uh, an asymptotic phenomenon? Okay, uh, first of all, I want to say, okay, and uh, you say secondary consolidation. I, I can tell you, uh, Professor Fenernis uh, is not really happy about the wording of a secondary consolidation. Okay, so we change this uh, turn the word two words into secondary compression. Okay, we don't have a consolidation. Uh, Fenner communicated with me directly, so you can see the chapter seven. We don't see any secondary consolidation because his argument is in the secondary period, no consolidation because no excess pressure dissipation anymore. So this is something I want to mention to you. Okay, we use. Secondary <laughs> compression, so I fully agree with Professor Fenelis. Okay, that's number one. A uh, secondary uh, compression is a phenomena we observe. People can see very clearly after the end of primary condition, means after dissipation of excess pore pressure. Okay, this is an observation, so people can see it's correct. It actually is correct. The my question is. Before the end of before the end of primary condensation in the primary condensation period, is there any viscous deformation? This, this is a big argument. Okay, so nowadays, ninety nine percent of people consider we do have viscous compression in the primary condensation period, even though the vertical effect stress is not constant. Vertical effect stress is still increasing with the time. Okay, in the primary condensation period, which can induce, can result in the viscous compressions. Okay, nowadays 99% of the people in the world believe that. Okay, only one person believes hypothesis A. Okay, I have to I have to say this one. Okay, my explanation is okay. Okay, all right, thank you. So let let's move on. Uh, next question oh, from Kash Kasha. Yeah. I uh, just wondering, hypothesis B, your method is uh, applicable to residual soil. Professor Lawrence D. Weasley highlighted that the stress history, normal consolidation, 
over consolidation have no relevance to residual soil. Okay, there's something we need to the properties of residual source. If a residual source has a very little uh, um, creep uh, uh, behavior, has if crisis, uh, residual source have very little uh, creep, then no need to consider hypothesis B. Uh, no need to consider hypothesis A. The behavior is very much elastic plastic. You know, no, no, we don't have to consider any creep. So we don't have to use A, we don't have to use B, doesn't matter. We have a hypothesis B method is for clearly source in which the creep properties is really significant. Okay, that's my key point. Okay, uh, for sand, for example, sand has a very little creep. Why you want to make things very complicated? Just count the sand to be elastic plastic. That's it. So we don't have to worry about the hypothesis A, hypothesis B. Okay, that's my my answer. Okay. That okay, great. So. Yeah, uh, due to the time of interest, let's just uh, uh, go to the last question uh, from Dana. I appreciate your comprehensive presentation. Would you kindly repeat your explanation of uh, uh, T0 as a measure on slide 45 when you mention it should be fixed? Are you suggesting that uh, we should consistently use the same T0 for every sample or analysis? My understanding okay. is that T0 serves as a curve feeding parameter during constitutive model calibration. Uh, this is a very good question. And uh, people, many people have a wrong understanding on the T0. Why we say T0 is one day, we have a precondition for this one. For example, you imagine we do a dominant test. On the one vertical loading, we can get this curve voice ratio decreases with the local time. And this is a point, is a turning point at the end of primary condition. In laboratory, keep in mind, in laboratory, the thickness of a specimen is only 20 millimeter. So that this TOP in the in the laboratory, only a few minutes, no more than 30 minutes, I tell you, for most of the case, no more than 30 minutes. Okay? That's a that's a time scale. But normally, the commercial, many commercial standard, we suggest to keep a work loading for up to duration up to one day. Your many standard, like Euro code, British code, I'm not really sure the Canadian Foundation manual suggests. Normally keep a work loading for one day, at least one day. So if we keep more than one day, this is 24 hours, okay, 24 means 24 hours, this is one day. Of course, you can keep it longer, say two days, seven days up to here. Then when we plot the strain and the stress, you are mentioned before, which we should be to strain. And this is under vertical, constant vertical stress. When we plot, this is a strain, this is a local stress. The point, normally people choose this point with a duration 24 hours, that's one day, to plot this point, plot this point, or plot this point, or plot this point here, here or here. So the point here, all have a one day duration already. In this case, T0 is one day. You're asking me why? Because my simple methods is for calculation of creep from one day and up, okay? My creep calculation, my simple method is for us to determine uh, creep sediment is for one day or more, or more. So you can see, you can see my method here, I show you. I show. Here, okay, here it is for t more than t zero for t zero. So, and also you can keep some slide here. So, the imagination the loading duration is one day, for example, from here to two or from one to four, just duration for one day. If one day this equation is one day, this is one day, the creep is zero. So, on this line, if we consider creep is zero, okay, one day, one day, zero. If we, if we do use T0 one day, say half a day, this is one day, then this is more than zero. It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. So we have to keep everything consistent. So no contradiction. Okay, so T0 is one day on the condition. All the points here from the tests have one day duration already. We keep it consistent, okay? That's it. Very good question, okay? 
and we we, we must be very careful on this one. Is that, is that okay? More uh, questions? I think you're great. I think you're great. So uh, I think this pretty much the end of a question, a Q&A session. Uh, before we wrap up a, a, this uh, a lecture, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors, uh, DB Doug and WSC, for supporting this event. And again, thanks to Professor Ying for this uh, uh, thorough uh, details of the presentation and uh, for uh, the material he would like to share uh, to the audience. And thank you again. And I would like to close this section. Uh, uh, thank you all uh, for attending this event. Thank you, Dr. Lin, Dr. Den, uh, Dr. Chalafa, and uh, everybody on the line. And uh, you can get the materials from Professor Den. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Yu. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank See you, everyone. Great, See you. great yeah. presentation. Have a good meeting now. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.